Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Good morning, Philadelphia. The psalmist says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I said, with my song, will I praise him. Philadelphia, it is time to praise him in song. Today, we are trading in our sorrows. We are laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Amen. Come on, I want you to sing this song with me. Cast your cares on the Lord. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the my strength so we ought to cast our cares on the one who cares for us don't worry about it he can handle it just lay them down at the feet of the lord and leave them there i want you to know that joy comes in the morning the morning is not necessarily the a.m but the morning is when you wake up so it is time to wake up philadelphia and experience the joy of the lord yes lord yes lord yes
Philadelphia, it is so. Amen literally means it is so. So today we have declared that it is so. We have cast our cares and laid them at the feet of the Lord. We have declared to the devil that we are putting our trust in him. We are putting our trust in the one true God who knows best. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to visitors and friends and the members of the Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood. Today, I have the honor and privilege to call all of us to worship before God. And this reminds me about our Sabbath school lesson this morning. We discussed that Jesus Christ is the perfect substitute for your sins and my sins, so that we can become the inheritors of his kingdom of heaven. Without his sacrifice, we would have been a lost people, but we are now capable of inheriting eternal love and salvation. This leads me to the scripture taken from Psalm 16, verses five and six. Here David is stating his relationship with the Lord. It says, the Lord is a portion of my inheritance and my cup. Thou manifestest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in the pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. We all have this heritage with God. Let us uphold it as we come now for our opening hymn, which praises God. It is the selection, our selection is the national, black national anthem. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, 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 oh. 
Shall we pray? Eternal Father and our God, once again we come before you with humble spirits, thirsting souls, in expectation of spiritual waters. We are asking you, Lord, to once again join us. We're asking you to move on our hearts and our spirits. Lord, we come because we're looking for improvement in our lives. We come because we're looking for a closer relationship with you, O oh Lord. We're coming, Lord, because we have a desire to fulfill your purpose for our lives, to complete the plan for our lives that you've had in place before the foundation of this world. Lord, anytime we approach you, you always hear our prayers. But you don't only hear our prayers, you answer our prayers. And you draw us closer to you with loving kindness. Lord, we continue to depend on you to lead us and guide us and perform in our behalf. And you've never let us down, nor caused us to be ashamed. And today we look to you, Lord, to teach us and to show us how to implement your word that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Amen. He holds our hands. Amen. Why? Because he knows our name. And you know who else knows your name? Us here at Philadelphia. And we are just so happy that you came on back with us. And we're just happy that you're here with us. And at this time, I have some virtual announcements that I want to share with you. So if you could please grab your smartphone or a pen and paper and follow along with me so that you can be informed. Now, tomorrow, February 27th at 4 p.m., right here on this Zoom link, we will have our annual business meeting. It is open to all active members. So you want to come on back where right here on this Zoom link for our annual business meeting. All active members are welcome. Now, March is just around the corner. And guess what? We will embark on our 30-day mental diet. Woohoo! So it is a time for us to prepare for our Passover. And guess what? This year, we are starting something new and fresh, and you definitely want to be a part of it. We will be sending out daily posts to your cell phones so that you can interact and uplift one another. However, we need your help. We need you to send us an email with your cell phone number, preferably, so that you can be a part of that group chat when we send out our 30-day mental diet posts. So, you want to send that email to pcubsabbathcathedral at gmail.com. You want to have your first and last name and your cell phone number. So what? You can be a part of the 30-Day Mental Diet Daily Post. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be wonderful. Also, 
we want to take March to be a time of communication here at Philadelphia. We are asking all members to reach out to a senior or member. I'm looking through my participant list to see who I can reach out to this week. And I want you to do the same thing. But when you reach out, I want you to uplift, encourage, uplift, encourage, and invite them to come on back to where PCUB so that they can be informed and be a part of God's word. Now, uh, PCUB is connected and we are on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, head on over. You're gonna type in Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood. You wanna share us on your timeline. You wanna look at our messages and you definitely wanna be our friend. We are also on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is PCUB1967. And we cannot forget YouTube. We are on YouTube as PCUB Brooklyn. You definitely want to see what we're doing with our Mindful Mondays. I mean, our pastor, he digs in deep and he goes there and he gives us some motivation to carry us throughout the week. So definitely head on over to YouTube at PCUB Brooklyn. Now, I don't want us to forget our teleconference services that take place during the week. Like I said, there is always something going on here at Philadelphia. Wednesday nights, we have our prayer meetings at 7 p.m. We also have our Friday night living room sunset session, which takes place at 7 p.m. We have our adult Sabbath school classes that take place every Sabbath morning at 10 a.m. And guess what? Coming a little bit closer, the kiddies have their own Zoom link right? For Sabbath school. And we're asking all the parents to log on. That information is always going to be at the end of service. So you can jot down that Zoom link so that I can see those kiddos every week. And we also have our PYA sessions, which have been skyrocketing and just doing wonderful things every Sabbath afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Now, I just want everyone to remember that now is the time in service for us to turn on our cameras. I wanna see those beautiful faces, beautiful people. I want you to flash those pearly whites and I want you guys to vibe along to our new welcome song by uh, brother Chris Grant. He wrote it and I just want you to take the time now, turn those cameras on, turn that music up and just fellowship with us. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to all our visiting friends. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us today. We know that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So come on, don't be afraid to lift those hands, clap your hands, and give the Lord some praise.
man, it is certainly worth the trip from anywhere to worship at Philadelphia. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. We are all welcome indeed this morning. The presence of the Lord this is a great place to be. Amen. And in this sentiment of praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, we now have a, that give that heartfelt affirmation that we have every week so that we can focus ourselves in the grace and the power of the Lord in our lives. So let's come together and sing, say with me uh, the affirmation of faith. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, Almighty God, thy will be done this day. For oh, today is the day of pleasant surprises, prosperity, and fulfillment. I will continually give thanks for this wonderful day. And blessings shall follow blessings. Health shall follow health. Prosperity shall follow prosperity. Miracles shall follow miracles, and wonders shall never cease. Amen. I believe, I receive, I do believe. Amen. At this time, we have a spotlight on a, of, on a Black History Month, and that's the title Stand Up, and we will have that by courtesy the Lavelle family. No, stay tuned. We know it's going to be great that the soup of the bless the Lord this morning. Today, we celebrate a mighty woman of God. She was a brave and selfless woman who, with God as her guide, led many of our people to freedom. We celebrate you today, Miss Harriet Tubman. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a Bible in my hand. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head, just in case I have. I do what I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across that river Can you hear freedom call? Oh, 
just might fail, but Lord knows I tried. Sure as the stars fill out the sky. Stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going, going to a brand new home. Far across the Amen. Amen. We just need you to move over to the chat and give God some praise. Amen. What a blessing it is to see family united together, lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lavelle family for that selection. And we're going to continue giving God praise this morning as we have a rendition of We Shall Overcome by the PCB, PCUB Music Ministry. Amen.
Amen. We are indeed having the time of our lives to overcome today. Amen. Today is a time of present surprises and prosperity. So with this theme in our hearts, we have come to the time of great blessings of praise. God, this is the time where the Lord has extended a special invitation to all of us to come and to be blessed. That everything that we give unto the Lord, that we surrender our life unto the Lord, that he is going to give us a hundredfold even here and an end eternal life. So at this time, I call in for days, tithes, and offerings. And of course, we are so many ways that we can give unto the Lord in these times. We have our million post box, Rockville Center, New York, 1121570. We also have our cash app, SPCUB. That's right, SPCUB. And then the online via Zelle. We have Zelle, we have Philadelphia Cathedral. So, there are three ways to give. There are three ways to give here, and we have heard these things. But this time, I want us to be blessed as we bow our heads. I be thank the Lord in prayer for the greatness, for the life that He has given us, the opportunity that He has bestowed upon His people to be blessed, to be strengthened, and to be upheld by His free Spirit. Yes, thank you, dear Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your health and strength. We thank you for the word of deliverance that you have brought to your people this day. Bless us, bless the works of our hands, and pray, pray God, that we will continue to be used as, a, as your servant, as your ambassador. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of the Holy Spirit abide on your people. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. It's the Lord, saints. This morning, our sermonic scripture comes from the pen of the prophet Isaiah as he speaks of God's compassion on his children. It is taken from Isaiah chapter 54, and I shall be reading, and I ask you to follow along with me as I read from verse nine through verse 17. I shall be reading from the King James Version. For this is the waters of Noah unto me, for I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wrought with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountain shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows of her gates, and thy gates with carbuncle, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness thou shalt be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come nigh thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall 
for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth the, an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Brethren, these are the words of the Lord for the people of God. And now let us let our hearts turn to him even further as we listen to the Philadelphia Community Choir. Hmm. We are reminded today that God has given his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Security. 
won't you pray with me? Just bow your heads where you are. Let's invoke the Spirit of the Lord. Father, I'm asking you to bless us today. I'm asking you to impart to us the importance of a good legacy and remind us of our heritage that, that we may live on to you that we may walk as good ambassadors of Jesus Christ and successful men and women right here, right now, day after day. We're trusting you to bring this to pass in our lives because we look to you and you only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this is February. And we're almost at the end of the shortest month in the year. But it's power packed. And as uh, we have promised from the beginning of the, the month that uh, we would keep bringing to you what is necessary to empower you, what is necessary for us to remember to move forth in victory and to move forth in success, if you will. That's what matters. That's what really matters. That's what matters to you. That's what matters to your children. That's what matters to your family, that we practice and we keep moving upward and forward. And that's what this pulpit is dedicated to. So we come to the close of Black History Month and we celebrate President's Week. We look at the rich legacy left for our race. The great achievement of men and women of color. The legacy that is left behind for us to build on, for us to be proud of, for us to take as an example of what we can achieve and what we can accomplish as men and women, as a race. The legacy is meaningful. The legacy is structural. It is a foundation for us to learn from and for us to follow and overcome obstacles, overcome challenges that we may encounter to implant the legacy of yes, we can. That's a legacy. Yes, we can. As a great black man instilled in our nation of black youths who now echo the truth that black lives matter, that's just one recent legacy by a living legend by the name of President Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States of America. Sidebar, sidebar, let's take a break right here. If the Board of Education in whatever city, in whatever town, in whatever country that you live in refuses to teach black history and the heritage of our black race, stand up and make sure that you teach your children that you teach your grandchildren, and not just teach them, but encourage them and show them the importance of passing it on to their children and their, their grandchildren. It's important and it's our responsibility 
as black people, proud black people. I wouldn't want to be anything but black. Let's move on. It's important for us to tell our children that they have greatness on the inside of them. Greater is, in, is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let our grandchildren know that. Let them hear that. Let them feel that, that they have greatness on the inside of you. Because as he is, so are we in this world. What does that mean? That they have the knowledge, they have the ability, they have the fortitude to accomplish great things. There's nothing too big that they can't accomplish. Let them be the best at whatever they set out to be. That's our responsibility to let them know. What legacy will you leave for your children? What legacy will you leave for our grandchildren, for our youth? What memorable legacy will we leave behind that will benefit the generations that follow? I ask myself this question, and I encourage us all to ask ourselves these questions. I think of myself, I think to myself, what will I leave as a legacy? How will I be remembered? What will you be remembered for? What will stand out to encourage and uplift the generations that follow? As a human being, we have a heritage. You say, what is a heritage? Something passed down from preceding generations. It's a tradition. The status gained by a person through birth, through a birthright. The heritage of wealth and power. Legacy leavers operate in ways that build trust and transform lives. Legacy builders, that's what I want. We are legacy builders, you and I. We are legacy builders. And they operate in ways that build trust and transform lives. I want to tell you about one legacy builder or legacy lever, I should say, uh, that I want to talk to us about today. But before I do that, I want to give us things to be mindful of as we listen to this message. Uh, there are three takeaways that I want us to be mindful of, and I want to set them on the screen right now for you to have them indelibly printed in your mind so that you remember this after this sermon. You remember it next, next month. You remember it in September. You remember it in October. You know, I want us to make this part of our knowingness, okay, part of what we do because of who we are, okay? Uh, the three takeaways is one. Number one, the importance of a good legacy. That's number one. The importance of a good legacy. Number two, be a servant leader. Yeah, that should sound familiar to us. Be a servant leader for more reasons than one. That should sound familiar to us. And three, remember your heritage. All right, moving right along. You know, every week we praise the Lord and we thank him for leading us and we thank the Holy Spirit for moving in our midst. And last night at our living room, all, this sermon was almost preached by, by, from a different angle. Uh, I had no idea that it would have came up like it did, but it was confirmation that we are on the right track and the Lord is leading and guiding. Uh, I heard a minute, um, uh, Sister Page bring forth a, a, a rendition or, or saying that 
we leave a legacy and our legacy is important. And, and I was so amazed to hear our, our deaconess, um, Sister Madass, come forward and she was so explicit on how the Lord leads and guides and the importance of us depending on God and how he will come through. And, and it was like they were preaching my sermon. <laughs> and, and I said, I didn't open my mouth. I didn't say a word because uh, it will all come out today. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the Lord does that. He continues to do that. One of the primary reasons successful leaders have legacy is because they understand its impact on everyone around them. Their goal is to build relationship and accomplish something memorable that will help the organization, help the schools, that will help our community move forward long after they're gone, long after we are gone, our legacy should continue to build and to encourage and to lift up because of our, the legacy we left behind. The importance of a good legacy builds community. The importance of a good legacy is the fact that you empower those that come behind you. That's important. They, you want to leave a legacy of something positive. You want to be known for lifting up, for building, for moving forward. When I think of you, I want to think of what that legacy is that you left behind. That is the importance of a good legacy. Your life shows what your legacy will be. You're making your legacy day by day. So be careful and, and be deliberate about your legacy. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I want to tell you about uh, a person. Uh, first of all, she was... She worked for the organization Forbes. She's a black woman, a powerful woman. And uh, she tells her story. She says, I once worked for a leader whom I never forgot. She, he always treated our team with respect. And in return, we trusted him and felt protected under his leadership. Everyone knew that if they could get on his team, their career would be set. Most importantly, he was a servant leader. Get that. He didn't mind getting his hands dirty. He always worked alongside us when there was an issue to resolve. He never avoided conflict and operated with what... He operated, this is what she said, he operated with what he called, a, what she called a velvet hammer. Sound, sound familiar? She, he, this man operated with what she called a velvet hammer. You would leave the room inspired, not even knowing that he, he had just put you in your place. This had much to do with his calm demeanor and his approach. He retired after 30 years tenure and the amazing impact he made on the organization is still talked about today. The power of trust is undeniable when leaving a legacy. You wanna leave a good legacy? People have to trust you. There are even those who leave behind a legacy due to their twisted meaning of the greater good. Take, for instance, this is what she points out. Take, for instance, stockbroker Bernie Madoff, for example, 
who was motivated by financial gain. He wanted to ensure his family was financially stable. Nothing wrong with that. But he, but he ultimately betrayed his family by defrauding thousands of investors in one of the most, the largest billion dollar Ponzi scheme in history. They trusted him with their life, their savings, their precious assets, and he robbed them of over 20, this is an estimate, 20 billion dollars. Madoff pleaded guilty to, to over 11 federal crimes and is serving a 150 year sentence. He left a legacy. While I certainly do not condone this, she, she goes on to say, the crimes of Madoff, it's clear that regardless of how positive or negative your legacy is, get this now, get this now, she says, building trust in others is essential to your ultimate goal. Now just think about all the ways building trust in others can truly be used for the true greater good. How can you use trust to leave a legacy where you work, where you live, where you go to school? This is important. Now, she goes on to say something, and I, and, and I, I love this article because so many of the tenets of Philadelphia, so many things that we have been preaching over the years, she admonishes and she, 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 she condones. That's a better word. Okay. Humility. Exhibit humility and compassion. This is what she writes. Humility and compassion are must-haves if you want to leave a legacy. They are memorable leadership traits and what I call trust builders. People have to be at the forefront of your thinking. Who? People have to be at the forefront of your thinking. As said so eloquently by Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou said this, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget the way you made them feel. Okay, that's Maya Angelou. If you are having trouble exhibiting these behaviors, you might want to reevaluate why you want to lead. This woman counsels those that are on the track for going up the ladder in the corporate world. In your life is your message, she says. Discovering the core of transformational leadership by Dr. Nancy Blair and Dr. Mark Geschner. Howard Behard, the retired president of Starbucks says, I learned that to be successful, I had to put people first. Stop thinking I had all the answers and really listen to people closest to the business. She goes on to say, don't be a ladder climber. What does she mean there? Don't be a ladder climber. If you have ever had a mentor, you've heard them say, don't worry about getting promoted. Just perform. Focusing only on career achievement can contribute to your demise. If when it gets out that you're a ladder climber, the legacy will follow you long after you're gone. That's what legacies do. It's difficult to shake, she says. People can, cannot trust a ladder climber because their agenda doesn't include them. Employees want to be valued. <laughs> then uh, she gets biblical on us without going to the Bible. She says, don't think yourself more highly than others. Sound familiar? She says again, don't think yourself more highly than others. <laughs> Third time is a charm. Don't think yourself more highly than others. 
Your title doesn't define you. People seek to know what's in your heart and that you are genuine. What do people seek? They seek to know what's in your heart and that you are genuine. Genuine. If you walk around taunting others with your title or Ivy League ed education, they'll judge you based on that very perception of you. Fear of judgment causes them to be uncomfortable sharing life events or simply critical things going on in the workplace with those they believe are condescending. Then she goes on to say, I, 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 I'm just sharing this with you. Uh, we need something powerful to end out this Black History Month with, and, and I'm sharing this. When a person has wronged you, give them the chance to make things right. Make things right. The importance of a good legacy. This is uh, what we're talking about here. Make things right. When a person has wronged you, give them a chance to make things right. The release is good for you, but it helps them move on. Don't think that you have to be best friends, but moving forward, use what Stephen R. Covey calls smart trust. In his book, The Speed of Trust, smart trust is what you use when someone has lost your trust but you still need them in your life. You only trust them with specific things to protect yourself from being hurt by them again. If you give them a chance, they may work even harder to regain your trust. Trust, of course, you should also make right things with anyone you've wronged. You must make things right with anyone you have wronged. You may need them at some point, okay? She says, now, uh, I, 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 I love this because this comes right around the time of Katani Brown Jackson, who is a nominee and is a conventionally qualified judge with a strong background in criminal justice reform. Sidebar, sidebar. She was a former public defender, and current judge on a powerful appeals court circuit. As the president's nominee to replace retiring Supreme Court Justice Stephen Beyer, when conformed, I'm sorry, when confirmed, Judge Jackson will be the first black woman ever to sit on the Supreme Court. Say amen. amen. Write something in the, in, the, in the chat, complimentary, uplifting. Say something good about her, and let's pray for her, amen? <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, I, 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 I can hardly wait for her confirmation. <laughs> okay, Janet Beaverman, who is the woman that works at Ford, Forbes, uh, Janet Beaverman is a God-fearing woman with wisdom, as you can hear. It appears that the Supreme Court nom nominee, Katanji Brown-Jackson, is also someone who knows her true heritage and takes God as her portion. And God has, been, has brought her thus far by faith. That's what she says and her cup runneth over as she is brought to the forefront. We would see and want to see her salt and life because we are salt of the earth and light of the earth. Let, let's judge righteous judgment and lift her up in our prayers that she will walk in her heritage. Let's lift her up in our prayers and hope and pray that she will walk or continue to walk in her heritage. Uh, leaving a, a, a legacy leaving leader will always package his or her vision so that it continues to evolve. They write the vision and make it known. 
In a former role, she's saying, this is uh, Janet Beaverman talking again. In a former role, I was responsible for delivering a global process, process that impacted the entire organization. When I was offered the opportunity, I knew it was essential to leave all of the tools needed for my predecessor and the organization to continue to be successful. I had to leave my predecessor all the tools for them to go forward and for the organization to be successful. The process, get this now, was eventually delivered globally. I'm looking forward to hearing about the ways you are building trust and leaving a legacy. That's from Forbes coach and counsel, Janet Beaverman. Okay. Be a servant leader. Be a servant leader. Remember, never to forget, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, talking about you and I, shall be condemned. Get this. Heritage. Remember your heritage. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. No weapon is going to for, for is going to prosper. Nobody coming up against you will win when you are servant leader of the Lord. This is your heritage. Hear it. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. That's what the psalmist said. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Now, Dr. Thomas read that for our call to worship this morning. <laughs> when the Lord is your portion, you have a good legacy and a great heritage. The psalmist says you have a goodly heritage when the Lord is your portion and, and your cup. Your cup, we know your cup runneth over and surely goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Say amen. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue, get that, every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Because this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. That's big. That's huge. That's God proclaiming that he is your protection, that he's the fence around you, and nobody can touch you because he's got you. That's a promise. That's a proclamation that God made in the Old Testament and fulfilled it by sending Jesus to be our sacrifice, as you studied in your lesson this week. I don't need to ask anybody, if you're interested in being a servant leader, if you're interested about your family and your own personal gain, I don't need to ask you, did you study your Sabbath school lesson? The Sabbath school lessons have been powerful to the uplifting of mankind. They've been powerful in getting you ahead. And I want you to know, this writer of this Isaiah said, Using both military weapon, the word weapon, and the legal judgment metaphors, God proclaims that his people will withstand all attacks because of his protection. I want you to get that. You are a winner. You shall prosper. He will be a wall of protection around you and around yours. They will not succeed to prosper if they're coming against you. It's a promise to the servants of the Lord. It's a promise to servant leaders. 
It's your heritage. That's number three. You know, remember your heritage. This is your heritage, knowing that you're protected by God, knowing that God has had got your back. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Not for everybody. This is for the servants, servants of the Lord. This is the heritage of them who serve the Lord. I, who are you? You are PCUB. Know your heritage. God knows your heritage. Remember, he speaks of you in Revelation 3, 7 through 13. He says, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He's talking about you. He that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know your works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast had a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied me. Behold, I will make of them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and they're not, but they lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I, God, have loved you, okay? Because thou hast kept my word of patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. We're living in an hour of temptation today, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which you have, that no man take your crown. Him that overcometh, this is what he's got lined up for you. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall no more go out, and I will write upon him the name of the Lord and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath here... Ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to you today. This is your heritage, Philadelphia. Yeah. Know your heritage. It's important for to have a good le legacy. Be a servant leader and remember your heritage. God bless you. Amen. give God glory. Hallelujah. How many of us know that there is a, a relationship with God, the closer that you get to him. Hallelujah. The hymn says, nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee, even though be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song shall be nearer my God to thee. We invite you to take time out now just to sing to the glory of God. Hallelujah. The words will be on your screen. We invite you to just raise your hearts in song this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The nearness comes from trusting in him.
into the temple pretty soon but right now you're a click away right now you are you can contact us through the airways through the internet God has opened up the door for you and we are Philadelphia the church with of the open door the church that cares for our community. We know that there are a lot of you watching that want to turn your lives around. A lot of you want to get closer, nearer to God. A lot of you want to have the success of the heritage of the Lord. The Bible says you 
once you confess the Lord Christ Jesus and understand and receive that he bled and died for you and God sent him just for you, you shall be saved. They, the Lord says he will not turn anybody away. You have to believe with all your heart that God sent Jesus. You have to surrender and tell the Lord, I receive you, Lord. I want your precious blood that you shed for me to be poured out on my situation, to change my situation. I come, Lord, and you said you would receive me. If you do that, we're in contact us. The way to contact us is on the screen. We will have one of our members, one, one of the of our deacons or our, our ministry contact you and lead you in that path. So take advantage of it. Email us, contact us any way you can and we'll be there for you. God bless you. I want us to understand before we close out this service that we have a legacy and it is important that we understand that we have a good legacy that that we are good servant leaders we are here to serve our community to serve our fellow man to serve our families and to lead in the path that God directs. Remember your heritage as we pray. And as you go through this week, I want you to add this to the things that you pray. Remember that you're the oracle of God, of course. Remember that we pray in the name of Jesus because he has given us the authority and the right to use his name. Remember these things. Have the faith of God, the God kind of faith, and understand your heritage. God bless you. Won't you bow your head as we pronounce the benediction? Eternal Father and our God, we're thankful once again to be in your presence. We come to you, Lord, because we trust you. We come before you, Lord, because you are our hope. We understand that we have a heritage with you. Cause us to remember our heritage. Cause us to be good servant leaders. Show us the importance of the way we live. We are leaving a good legacy behind daily. These mercies we ask in the name of Jesus. And now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Amen. I just want to say it's been wonderful worshiping with you once again, and I look forward to you coming and us meeting again next week, I would encourage you to bring someone along with you next week to share the word and to share the hope and the faith and, and, and the good word that we get here each and every week. The presence of the Lord is strong and we invite him. Matter of fact, we bring him with us every time we come. So think about having a watch party. Call somebody and tell them Philadelphia is on. Until then, I bid you keep your head up. Walk in the spirit of light and truth and understand that the best is yet to come. Stay tuned for some vivid reminders and some things that you need to know and jot down or whatever you might need, how to contact us, how to be part of our 
midweek services, okay? God bless you, and see you next week. Good afternoon, Philadelphian family, friends, and visitors. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We're so blessed to have you worshiping with us this week. Here are the announcements for the week. One thing we truly value at Philadelphia is community. And whether today is your first time or Philadelphia has been your church for years, truly the best way to get connected with our family and start meeting others is through our weekly prayer meetings. Our prayer meetings take place each Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. and are led by our senior pastor, Dolores Jeffries. To join these meetings, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058, pound sign. We invite you to join us each and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for our welcoming the Sabbath living room service. To join our welcoming Sabbath service, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058, pound sign. Our Sabbath adult classes begins every Sabbath morning at 10 a.m by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058, pound sign. Our children's Sabbath school also takes place at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Our young people's meeting and Vespers will begin each and every Sabbath afternoon at 4.30 p.m through 6.30 p.m. To join our young people's meeting weekly, connect via Zoom with the meeting ID 785-810-9958 with the password PYA530. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week by visiting us online via Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube using the handles located on the screen. And if you're in need of a prayer request, or if you have any inquiries, send us an email at pcubsabbathcathedral at gmail.com. Our recently added Mindful Mondays are posted each and every Monday on our YouTube channel at PCUB Brooklyn, New York. Start your day with words of encouragement from our ministerial leadership. Our greatest glory is never falling, but rising every time we fall. We're so glad you're here. If you've come prepared to give, there are a number of different ways you can do so. You can send your tithe directly via mail to P.O. Box 642 Rockville Center, New York 11570 or send your tithe via Cash App to cash tag, cash sign PCUB. You can also send your tithe electronically via Zelle to PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. We believe God has something unique to say to you. And our hope is that you feel his love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day.